Matthews from Red Feather Productions, and you are listening to Movie Raid. It's time for the Movie Raid, and tonight's victim is director J.R. Matthews that is currently doing the short film, Say and Day. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Fantastic. So tell us what you can about this film, and first of all, is it going to be also a feature film as well? No, I don't believe it'll be a feature film unless we expand it, but currently it's a short film called Say and Day. Say and Day is a Kiowa trickster. Kiowa is a tribe in Oklahoma, and these are stories that we grew up with, and tricksters are, are ones in the tribe who do who play tricks on others. And this is a story about a white Saiyan Bay who is looking for Indian Saiyan Bay because he believes he is the best trickster of all time. And and how far have you gotten with Saiyan Day? Is this in terms of production? Are you you're about to get this out there locally, so to speak, or, or do you have other plans maybe if, if this goes well? Well, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. We'll enter it into festivals. Currently, we have uh, gone out, we've visited the site, we've got everything cast. We are going on to shoot uh, starting October 11th in um, a place a called Gabriella. It's south of uh, Dadel in New Mexico. So we'll be on site shooting it there. We've got uh, six actors. Uh, we've got 18 crew and we've got uh, 20 extras. It's a big shoot for a little film. How, how much is this like budget is? Is it, is it a decent budget for you or do you think you're going to need more money to, in order to expand it further? Well, we've raised almost half of the, of the budget. The budget we've got currently is $60,000 which is a lot of money for a short film, but uh, we want to make sure that we do this you know, correct and right. Uh, we've shot short films in the past for little to no money, but with this one, you know, we've got uh, Wes Studi, who's an Academy Award, and he's getting his Academy Award in October, two weeks after we shoot our film. Uh, we've got Wes Studi, I mean, we've got uh, Mark Abbott, we've got Kyle Kelly, we've got Ricky Lee, we've got Ernie Stevens, we've got Matt Robinson. These are all guys who are highly trained, highly professional, so flying them in, uh, being on location, taking care of all of the expenses, everything gets expensive. You know, we have to rent the location. Uh, movie locations are not cheap in New Mexico, so we're having to pay for that. It's an old west town. So when you start adding them all up, it just it nickels and dimes you to death, but it, it gets up there pretty quick. Because we're going to loop the film, we're going to do voiceovers, we're going to do music. we got, you know, a lot of stuff to do. And we've raised about half the money. We've got a GoFundMe page called Second Day the Movie. If anyone wants to donate, they can go to that page and help us out because we're going to need money to finish this film. It's so rough when it comes to that. I, you know, I can imagine how, how much what you have here. You got your whole set here, but it's the fact is that the money is such a, a huge problem. I mean, you can't get like any companies to actually help out because they're going to wonder what you're all about, and then chances are you're, they're not going to pay attention, or maybe they just totally just blow you off. Well, and the problem is they all want to know what's the return on investment well if this were a feature film and we were going to a worldwide release and we were going to have video sales and everything else and there could be some residual income coming in but with short to go through a film festival circuit and you may or may not win any money the residual income is is very minimal and so putting putting money into this it's a donation it's a gift to help filmmakers and people artists like ourselves you know, to continue to make films to keep progressing in, in our craft and do the things that we love to do. Start the filming date. That's that's the worst part of it. It's like, here you are. You got what the money that you can get, but you still need that additional support, unfortunately. Yeah, we've got enough money to get it started. We're not going to have enough money to finish. So if we had to shoot today, we could get a shot. But then we wouldn't have any money for post-production. We wouldn't have any money for, you know, uh, marketing, any for the festivals, for tra- you know, travel. People like myself, the unit production manager, manager, the director of photography, the editor, all those are delaying their payments until we raise the rest of the money because they believe in the film also. So we're just you know, going to do this on faith and, and go from there. Oh man, so ho- hopefully things will go smoother than what it is already. But the good thing is, at least at least you got a, a straight straight set plan for this, and you and you have an actual crew going on. So that, I mean, that's that's part of the problem solved. At least I mean, that's some good news. And at least you got half the money saved up. Hopefully, this uh, at least by the end of the month, you'll get the rest of it. Yeah, that's what we're hoping, and that's what we're planning on. We're going to be reaching out to a lot of our you know uh, fellow contacts, our friends, our family, the kind of people that to finish 
it off. But we've got so many people that are giving us great deals. I mean, we've got a drone pilot that's coming out who's giving us a price of about a third of what he would normally charge per hour because he wants to do this film with us. You know, we've got the makeup and, and costume people giving us great prices. Everything, you know, everyone wants to be involved. And these are all filmmakers in New Mexico who, who are working on regular films all the time. And they're going to take out of their own schedule to come and help us on a weekend and get this thing done because they want to put in the high quality work that it's going to require. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. Well, but when it comes with with this particular type of project, do you think Saying Day can make a new example of uh, cult- cultural differences in its own way? Well, I think it'll give cultural awareness. That's what we try to do with all of our, our films. They're all Native American films that we do, and we're trying to educate people besides entertain. You know, when we when we do a film, we want to say, you know, we just, we're not trying to just make a film. We're trying to give education and teach people a little bit about the Indian culture and the people that were in this country first. Oh, I totally understand because in today's society, especially today's society, it's it's so mixed reactions, mixed emotions about a history and even current events. And, and the fact is that when this is on film, that's usually the best example that you can possibly give in order to get that word out there rather than having to uh, go uh, a more violent direct route. Yes, yeah, so and one, one of the things we look at is you know, we're trying to tell the truth and trying to give what really is about Native American people. We try to train all of our Natives in all aspects of films because they don't get those opportunities a lot of times. So we're trying to give them that opportunity. I I was the artistic director of the American Indian Theater Company back in the early 80s and and the 70s. And we were training our people who are currently work from our little company there in Tulsa, the American Indian Theater Company. We have uh, 14 people who have have gone on and worked professionally. You know, people like Mark and people like Wes and Kyle. There are three of my... uh, people that have come from our programming that we've trained and taught these guys. Are Native Americans still, in terms of acting, are they still getting uh, good jobs or are they struggling uh, in order just to survive based on trying to get their art out there? They're struggling. I mean, we've got some people who are breaking through. You know, you've got Wes. Uh, you have my cousin, Trisha Wood, who is uh, head of casting at Lion Gates Film. You know, so we have people that are stepping up. you got Rodney Grant. You've got other people who are stepping through. But we're getting a lot of people that are getting behind the camera. You know, and we're getting directors. We're getting producers. We're getting people that are coming up like my my niece my niece is uh, she lives in salt lake city she came out and has worked on my last film and then she wants to be on this film so she's coming in as one of our pas because she wants to learn because she did that you know she's only 16 she's gone in and started studying and is in the theater department and carrying on in school right now because this is what she wants to do in the future and that's exciting that we're able to help you know young people get a get a foothold and get excited about this business and it, it's awesome but at the same time it's, it's almost like a, a, a double-sided coin because it's great educational and the excitement and everything but at the same time we're, we still have problems in terms of the film industry in terms of nationalities and, and uh, in terms of work and, and all the stuff all together and having to either work our way around it to, to survive and turn to, to still get that art out there and then having to get you know decent jobs uh, acting jobs rather than having to re- solely rely on these larger known companies oh yeah absolutely you know when ladies are trying to make film I mean people are not stepping up to support them I mean I'm a perfect example you know I see a lot of other films that I truthfully think are not very good, but they get tons of money thrown at them. We have native films that are trying to get made, and people just ignore them in terms of funding, in terms of giving to them. I think the worst part is when when they do have a certain nationality. Okay, they're hiring for uh, a really cheap type of uh, or cheap move in terms of the role because they're not being represented of what they are and what they stand for. They're just playing a role, having a fake outcome or a fake look of the character that they're supposed to be looking like. I mean, these aren't just from the early cheap cheap movies that like has nothing to do with what they truly are oh absolutely you know and, and a lot of that comes about because of, of the culture that we're currently in i mean if this were 10 years ago it would be a different situation but today you know in our current political situation where we have hatred and bigotry and racism going on or native people for asian people for black people to try and get their voices out in the film industry is really difficult when you get such push 
with the hatred that's going on in this country right now. It's, it's something to the point where even though all this is going on, that, that will to survive, that will to unite with other people, do you think like traditional traditions, do you think even though with, with this film especially, do you think traditions uh, it's okay to carry over to have others uh, better understanding and uh, value of commitment so others can follow the same path, even if it's not within the same realm? Well, that's what we try to do. We try to get people to understand. We try to get them to look at what we're doing. We just don't want them to appropriate our culture. We don't want non-native people taking what they think is native and creating it and doing it. We can do it. We can tell our stories, and that's what we need. So we need help to do that because we're perfectly capable of telling great stories. Yeah, and I hate the fact that when, when some other nationals are doing this, when they were to tell the story and tell their art, uh, like <laughs> other people out there will just instantly go the more typical route of what they really stand for and having to see this kind of typical image. And that's the kind of image that they need to get rid of. I mean, it's, it's such a cliche and it's such a thing to think about, you know, whether it's Native Americans or African Americans and so forth. They just think, oh, this is how they act, this is how they behave, and represent representation is really poorly done in this matter instead of just showing their true colors of what they are and understanding we have to make it into it you know make them into an actual living joke right and some of the problems that we have we are guilty of it ourselves of appropriation but the fact is you've got over 500 different tribes and nationalities in this country that are native and they are as different as Germans are to uh, Spanish. You know, when you look at the Northeast, the Southeast, the Southwest, the Northwest, the Central States, and Northern Central States, our dances are different, our cultures are different, our songs are different, our language is different. When you start writing something and you try to make it one thing and you try to appropriate another culture's customs into that tribal function, it becomes something that's not. And that's what we have to look for. That's why we try to do that. Do you think would having the same culture and, and type of nationality of a cast, do you think this is be best worked with in terms of uh, even from jobs to more opportunities for themselves as well? That's difficult because even though this is a based on a Kiowa legend, I don't have a Kiowa actor in my show. So we're having to use, you know, I've got a Choctaw, I've got a Cherokee, I've got a Wichita. So I've got other tribal members. We're going to try and stay true to the Kiowa religion and culture by what we're doing. So, you know, that's that's why I say it's that hard distinction of appropriation. Yeah, it is, because even the slice little thing, because then they want full understanding in their own way, but at the same time, it's like sometimes... You, you can't fully provide it uh, even if you want to. It's just that it, some traditions, like, you're trying to fulfill every everything very authentic and other people want to judge it automatically just because they didn't have this or they didn't do that. It's like, you, you can find other ways, but unfortunately some people just don't want to see it that way that, you know, you couldn't get this particular type of tribe at the time. Well, it goes back to, like, in 1984, uh, when I was with the American Indian Theater Company, we produced a play called Black Elk Speaks. And it had David Carradine in the title role of Black Elk. And I got blasted by Native people from around the country that I had a white guy playing Black Elk. But the fact was, Black Elk's granddaughter, Lucy Looks Twice, chose David to play her grandfather in this play. So how, how was I to say no to the family and say, no, that's not going to be the way we do it? So it's not an easy thing to say, because if we get into that whole argument of, you know, appropriation of cultural realities and everything else, and we say that, you know, only Indians can play Indian roles, we create a double-edged sword and say Indians can only play Indian roles, you know, but yet in college, I got to play Judge Brack, I got to play uh, Macduff in Macbeth, I got to play, you know, non-traditional Indian roles, you know, because of a blind eye casting, I was cast in those roles as an actor. So, you know, where did we draw that line? As long as we stay true to the story and what we're doing, I think is the most important. Yeah, because having to limit or restrict or simply say no, even if that person is not standing on the opposite side of uh, the art side, that here you are an actor, that you should be allowed to play whatever role that is required for, for your skills. It, it shouldn't have to be, okay, well, you're African American, you can only play this particular thing then you're stereotyping then you're just spiraling into something uh, in a dark place that you are in a way you are discriminating someone that just because they're this or that having to play 
play these roles. That, that's really, really unfair because you see, let's say, um, Caucasian people playing as an Italian, and they're not Italian. <laughs> that's okay. Right. You know, it's just something like that as an example. But in a way, you know, you, you can't express your art without someone going into a different kind of judgmental state. But it's just that it's really a sad society having to uh, incorporate that and having to take that. So do you think doing uh, these films still, do you still worry about that? Do you still worry about rather not, you know, tribes or any other nationalities is actually going to go against you regardless of what you do? Yeah, and I do worry about it. And that's why we try and cast native people in native roles. I just can't find, if I can't find a cultural re resonance with that tribe, then we won't do it. But if we can find that, then we will. Oh, yeah, man. Well, go ahead and plug in any websites regarding to this project or anything that we can check out right now. We have a Facebook page called Say and Day, and then we also have a, um, a GoFundMe at Say and Day the Movie, where they can go and uh, help us out with all of that, donate money. Um, and then we have currently under construction SayandDay.com. It is a website that we should have up and running within the week or so. And Say and Day is spelled S A Y N D A Y. Say and Day. Say and Day. You know, it rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Say and Day. <laughs> there you have it, everybody. That is J.R. Matthews. Thank you so much for having me.